Hiya, my name is Sylphie, and I'll be going over how Felang, Mankey, Outen, and Buizel do in an in-game playthrough of Pokemon Uranium. Let's get right into it. <coughs> Felang is a cute little physical attacker. It evolves into Felunge at level 19, a Pokemon with a good 95 attack and speed, with an okay 70 defense. Once it levels up knowing rest, Felunge will evolve into Feliger. And just look at those stats! Wow! You can get a Feliger before the 4th gym if you pick up the rest TM on Route 8. There's not much to say about the normal type. It's immune to go, speak to fighting, you know the drill. I recommend getting Intimidate on Felunge instead of Cute Charm, for obvious reasons. And then there's Felunge. Liger's ability. Pokemon has always had a history of giving Pokemon incredible stats, but crippling them with bad abilities. Feliger has Lazy, which means it'll fall asleep the moment it enters battle. Does that make it unviable? No, not really. All you gotta do is wake it up with an awakening in-game, or use a Chesto Berry in competitive play. Rather than outright crippling, I'd say Lazy is just more of a slight inconvenience. One of Feline's starting moves is Charm, which is great early game. There's also Low Kick, which is pretty good if you want to hit those Heavy Steel and Rock Pokemon. And there's also Body Slam for Paralysis or Return for more power. I highly recommend teaching your Feliger Sleep Talk and keeping Rest on it. This is because there's a bug that allows the user to heal with Rest for free when used by Sleep Talk. It's basically Gen 2 Sleep Talk mechanics. Feliger has a lot of physical TMs and Move Tutor moves to choose from. Feel free to pick whichever coverage move you need. When it comes to fighting the gym leaders, Felang and Felange are not that great against Avern and Cali. But Felanger, on the other hand, hits like a truck against everyone else. The only things I'd watch out for are Tico's Inflagita, Rosalind's Window Tinger, Feyran's Ampharos, and Kato's Lucha Bra. Feliger is pretty much a better slacking and offers a slight challenge to using it. It's high risk, high reward. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you that Primeape has an evolution in this game? Well, it does. Mankey and Primeape are both glass cannons. Primeape has a 105 attack and 95 speed, but crummy stats everywhere else. And Perilla gains more bulk and a bit more attack. The fighting type has a good resistance to dark and rock, but a bad weakness to fairy, psychic, and flying. Fighting is more of an offensive type than defensive. Vital Spirit is a decent ability, but Anger Point is more fun, and Perilla has a signature ability called Infuriate. This ability will increase its attack by 1 whenever it's hit by a physical move. This is honestly a dang good ability when used right. Mankey's moves aren't the best at first, until it gets Karate Chop. There's also Drain Punch for a solid healing move, but the best fighting type move to teach on Emperella is Close Combat. Emperella has overall pretty good TMs. It can learn rock moves for coverage, it has all the elemental punches with Move Tutor, and that's all I have to say about that. I mean, you could teach it the special moves it gets, but to be honest, I don't know why you do that. I guess 80 special attack isn't horrible. You could technically get a Mankey before you fight Maria, it's just a bit more rare. And Mankey is great against her and Davern, specifically Davern's Deer Roll and Modrill, but Tofarang resists Mankey. For Kali, Primeape is really only good against her Tubjaw. It's a bit frail against her other Pokemon. The same applies with Sheldon. While Primeape may be super effective against Steel, his Pokemon have incredible physical bulk, and two of them are Psychic types. You should be able to get the Jungle's Crown, the item required to evolve Primeape, on Route 10. Or, if you want to Emperor earlier, you can wait until Tuesday and buy a Jungle's Crown from the Bill Beach department store. Unfortunately, most of Tico's team will resist Emperilla's fighting moves, but teaching Emperilla a rock move will help with this problem. Emperilla is bad against Rosalind because it's weak to her psychic and fairy moves. It's super effective against Feyran's ice Pokemon, but it's weak to Alpico and Dunsaraf. It's neutral to Hinata and weak to Whimsicott, and it resists Kato's dark moves and hits him neutrally, but Lucha Bra resists Emperilla's fighting moves. Overall, I'd say that Emperilla is a pretty good fighting type. Primeape isn't really the first Pokemon I expect to get an evolution, but I kind of like Emperilla. If I could sum up Outen in one word, it's disappointing. Let's start with the positives. Outen has higher stats than Burby. Charm, Wing Attack, and Quick Attack are all great early game moves. Serene Grace is an awesome ability, as we've seen with Dunsaraf. Being immune to Ground and Ghost is good, but I'm sure you know about the normal flying type combo. And finally, look how cute Outen is! Aww. Anyway, the problem is its evolution, Eshouten. Eshouten has a great 110 speed set and a decent 85 physical attack. The problem is that it learns lots of special moves, but can't use them. Air Slash with Serene Grace? Can't use that. Ominous Wind with an increased chance to boost all stats? Can't use it. Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball with a TM? It wouldn't work. Sure, you could get Nasty Plot with a Move Tutor, but 
Don't waste your shards. I'm sorry, but I don't think going over how Outen and Ashouten do against the gym leaders is necessary. I mean, sure, it's decent against Davern, but its stats will fall behind quickly. I don't really mean to be this harsh towards Outen, but it's just one of the worst flying types you can use. Just catch a Burby if you want an early flying type. Buizel has a 1% encounter rate on Route 3. That's literally the only way you can get Buizel. Well, you could wait until Route 14 to catch its evolution, Floatzel, but I feel like by then, you'll have a reliable water type. But let's say you get lucky. Or extremely lucky if you found a shiny. Buizel is a decent mixed attacker, but Floatzel is fast with more of an emphasis on its physical attack. The water type has good resistances, only two weaknesses, and it takes care of common types. There's a reason why bulky water types are popular. Floatzel has the swift swim ability, which makes it even faster in the rain. Buizel naturally learns Aqua Jet, which is a great priority move. Floatzel is a good user of Waterfall because it's fast enough to get the flinch chance, and there's also Ice Punch and Crunch with a move tutor. That's pretty much it for Floatzel. It only learns Water, Ice, a couple Fighting and Dark moves, Dig, Iron Tail, and Rock Tomb. I recommend this move set: Rain Dance for setting up Swift Swim, Waterfall for a stab flinch chance, Ice Punch for coverage, and Aqua Jet for priority. As for how Buizel and Floatzel do against gym leaders, Buizel does really well against Stafford, since it gets Water Gun to take care of his grounded rock Pokemon. Kali resists Floatzel's moves, and it's weak to Kara Roll. But with Sheldon, it resists his moves and hits Ka Meteor super effectively. Floatzel is great against Tico, especially with Aqua Chat on Eflagita. If you have Crunch on your Floatzel, then it can hit Rosalind's Drum Sama well. But overall, Floatzel is neutral against her. Unfortunately, most of Vagrant's team resists Floatzel's water moves, except for Andorin and Alpico. Floatzel is weak to Hinata, so teaching it an ice move could help if you want to use it. And lastly, Floatzel is neutral against Kato. Floatzel is a decent physical water Pokemon, but with how long you have to wait to find one and how rare Buizel is, I'm not really sure it's worth it because there are better options for physical water types. I'm not saying Floatzel's bad, and if you really like it, then go for it. It does its job well. Route 3 has an interesting selection of Pokemon, ranging from good to bad. There is a Pokemon that I skipped, but I'll be saving it for another video. You'll see. If this guide helped you and you want to see more, then please like this video and subscribe for more guides. The next video will be about the Pokemon on Route 4, so keep an eye out for that. I'll see you next time and I hope you have a good day!